Life, like the conversation, keeps changing. Get the first ever needs matched life insurance that changes as your life changes. Welcome to another week of the Dan Nichols Show in lockdown with Bright Rock as we continue to navigate these strange times we find ourselves in. And this week we do it with three particularly cool guests. A little later in the show, we catch up with Kagi Sorabada, who might be mental on the field, but he's a very calm, relaxed, level-headed guy off it. And he's busy working on a podcast to keep himself busy in these times and then we head not to his surf ranch or to hawaii but instead to sydney which is where we find surfing great kelly slater who updates us on his life and gives us some great memories of south africa but kelly slater is arguably not the best surfer on the show this week because our first guest is a gentleman who some people think were knighted for his services to rugby other people think knighted for his services to mental health but he was really knighted for being new zealand's very best surfer hello john Cohen. <laughs> well i can't believe that i'm following the kelly slater that's just like no good Put me on another show, Dan. JK, it's lovely to see you and lovely to see that, that big, warm smile. The last time we were together was in Tokyo. You were on the show during yeah. the Rugby World Cup. Very, very different times. How's life in New Zealand? How are you coping? Oh, it's been amazing, Dan. You know, like, just to think about you and I spending time together during the World Cup and we saw a lot of each other and it was a celebration of rugby. Yeah, it's been an amazing time here in New Zealand. We've been in lockdown now. Uh, this is our fifth week. We're going into level three uh, on Tuesday after Anzac Day. So, you know, it's been extraordinary and extraordinary in the sense that, uh, you know, it's been an emotional time. Lots of anxiety, lots of stress, lots of unknown, lots of fear, uh, lots of fun, lots of joy. It's just been this, this once in a lifetime moment that I don't think any of us have ever experienced. It's remarkable how people have been brought together in this particular space. And a lot of that comes down to leadership. We've had some very calm guiding leadership from our own presidents here in South Africa. But I think in the global leadership stakes, it's pretty clear that it's your leader who's top of the pile at the moment. Yeah, I mean, Jacinda's been amazing. She had, uh, you know, the, 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 the atrocities in Christchurch. She's had uh, all sorts of different things happening and now this, and she's handled it incredibly well. So, you know, we're really proud of her and it doesn't stop now. You know, we've got um, other challenges now. We've got financial challenges that are coming out of, uh, you know, all our, all our workplaces being locked down. So there's lots of different challenges that we're going to face probably for the next couple of years, Dan, you know. She's been a massive asset to New Zealand. So two of you, JK, for a very specific reason beyond the, uh, the normal rugby superstar role, and that's in mental health. It's a conversation you and I have had a number of times, both on and off the show. But what's been really exciting to see is the app that you've developed and the space that you've worked on so passionately is now accessible to all New Zealanders. Mentimere was created to be, you know, your personal well-being coach in your pocket. And, you know, we started three years ago. It's been a long story for me, you know, 15 years of being the face of mental health in New Zealand, but also understanding that our stats were heading the wrong way. So three years ago, I met my business partner, Adam Clark, who comes from a tech background. And our goal was actually to create a tool that would help people every day to get better. And we felt that if enterprises could gift that to the people, then we could really start making a difference. Obviously, a month ago, when we realized that, uh, you know, what was coming, because I have family in Italy, and then the government jumped on board. So uh, last week, we launched um, Mentimere, the app to New Zealand. It's been incredibly successful. And, and it's about just looking after your mental well-being during this time. And we just delivered those, you know, tools and techniques to people in a really simple fashion. Well, the app sounds terrific, JK. It's obviously available in New Zealand. Is it available elsewhere? And in particular, can we access it here in South Africa? 
No, but uh, Dan, I would love to be able to um, make it available in South Africa. Uh, shortly, we're going to go to Australia and obviously, um, you know, the UK and stuff like that. But I would love to hook up with someone in South Africa that would love to gift Mentimia to their people, to our people, all our people. Um, so, you know, if you can hook me up, I know you've got some pretty neat mates over there. So I'd love to bring it over. So let's connect maybe after this call and see if we can help, just help everybody. That's a terrific asset and it's a great job, JK. Well done on that. We've been watching videos as well here at JK and catching up on some old sport and some great nostalgia. And while we were doing that, in fact, Stefanos, my surf mad director, who you know well, came up with this particular clip, JK. So uh, let's Do have I a look. Uh, I don't think so, but I'd love to see if it jogs a few memories. Here's a... Here's, I think, what we can describe as some classic JK. As play swung out to the opposite wing where Jonah and JK were slugging it out. Maddox gets another half break to Howard, to Lomu. Lomu punches the ball ahead. Maddox in the action again, leaves out Cooper. Lomu. Well, Kerwin's a big man keeper. When Lomu goes down that touchline, he looks huge. Here he is again from Maddox at midfield. Three of them it took to get him down. One at the bottom, one at the top, and one in the middle. Now Cunningham at first line both to Berry. To clock from a Kerwin. Kerwin meets Lomu. And Lomu effectively got him over. Great contest there. First real chance for Kerwin to have a go at Lomu. But Lomu wrapped them up and pushed him into touch. Kerwin, past Lamu, Lera Nabula, look for the man inside, wasn't quite there. Bashup, away to Mannix. Lamu trying to crash the centre, and he's done well, hasn't he? Staying on his feet and pushing the ball. The 18-year-old still going. Kerwin goes into the middle of the field to get his marker. Bashup, wide to Lamu, he's got it. Short, desperate defence, another good tackle by Kerwin. We are seeing some tough stuff here today. Kerwin. Norm Hillett. Boom, boom. Jumped by Lomu. And Lomu's having a great game as well. Jumped by Lomu, just 18 years of age, but carrying a lot of beef there. And look at this. Norm Hewitt's a hard man to stop, but he got buried by John Lomu. Uh, some vintage footage. Do you remember that game, JK? Like yesterday, Dan, that's why I retired, mate. You know, here I am. I never tackled in my life. My job wasn't to tackle, mate. My job was to score tries. And then I see John Olomu, 18, 118 kilos. The first time I tried to tackle him, as you saw, I thought, what am I doing here? <laughs> you know, rugby was very different when I played. We didn't have to tackle too much. You know, we had the old drift defense. Often I'd drift off onto the touch judge, actually, which, which was the best option. Um, but here was Jonah, who changed the game. Indeed. We had Cheslin Colby on the show last week, a very different physical player, but no less effective to Jonah. Uh, so all sorts can make it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, some great memories there. And, uh, JK, thank you for sharing them with us. Uh, if I can uh, wrap up by just recalling part of the conversation we had in Tokyo, the pledge, I think, you were going to come out to South Africa to drink some wine and uh, uh, do a little surfing with us. Uh, please know that that invitation is still very, very much in place. And that as soon as we can start traveling again and seeing a bit of the world, we'll hope to have John Cohen touching down on South African shores. Well, when you said to me, Dan, that there are winemakers that make great wine and surf, I thought there can't be a better thing to do so there we go former rugby player great surfer most importantly at the moment a man who's done such remarkable work on mental health in new zealand well worth a look online to see what jk has been up to we've got another fabulous surfer who's won one or two more titles than jk coming up a little later as kelly slater joins us from sydney but right now let's go to the hottest property in fast bowling and world cricket at the moment and see how kagisa rabada is surviving the lockdown 
at the moment in all of the sport that should be happening around the world would be the IPL, that grand theatre of limited overs cricket that would be playing out with all the superstars around the world. Instead, those superstars are by and large confined to home. And one of those, one of the big draw cards in world cricket at the moment, is amongst those who's not able to get out and play. Hello, Kagi Sarabada. Hi, Dan. Yeah, it's nice to be on the show again. Right now we are in the HPL. Uh, uh -huh. the, the, the home Premier League. <laughs> uh, how uh, how is the home Premier League going? How's Kagisa Robada performing in this strange season? Um, I think in a way, for me, this was kind of a like a blessing in disguise. Um, although Corona, the Corona, COVID nineteen is not really a blessing at all. But in terms of getting some rest, I think it's. Couldn't have asked for anything else. I mean, it's been a long, well, not long. Um, it's been five years um, of me playing nonstop. And international cricket and cricket in general, uh, the volume has just, you know, increased. So in terms of that, it's, it's been quite nice spending spending time at home, uh, especially with my family, because I, mean, I never really get to see them. You mentioned the other interests. I know from when we've had you on the show in the past, the DJing is one of the big ones. Cricket set aside, what have you been getting up to? What has been keeping you busy and distracting you? Right now, actually, um, I've been, we've been doing some podcasts. So we started a project called The Viral Wellness. And it's a friend of mine. Uh, it's a friend of mine and myself. Uh, his name is Cameron Scott. So we went to the same school at Saints and we matriculated in, in the same year. And they were like, yeah, let's let's do something. The whole project is based around the coronavirus, which is quite relevant. And the first episode was just um, informing people and educating people on what um, coronavirus is. And then the second one was on the economy. Uh, the third one was on uh, mental health. The fourth one uh, was fake news, which was quite interesting. And the fifth one now we're about to release is on the envir environment. Um, so that that's I think that's one's going to be quite interesting. And uh, for every episode, we talk to um, a an expert. Give us in closing, KG, two games to go and have a look at on Super Sport uh, or on YouTube to go and catch up on. One of them, your all-time favorite Kagiso Rabada performance, and then one from a little before that. One of the performances that inspired you when you were still a kid, still a budding fast bowler, still one day dreaming of maybe playing for South Africa one day. Oh, that's amazing. Um, that's a good question. Hmm. I think a performance by myself uh, was uh, the test match we played in Perth in 2016 when we were uh, down and out after the first day, I think we they bowled us off for about 230 odd, and uh, overnight they were, I think, 80 without loss uh, and scoring at fours. And uh, we sat down afterwards and we're like, This we can't keep going on like this. And the next morning, uh, Dale got David Warner out on about uh, the, the mid 90s, and soon after that. I mean, there we got some hope, and but soon after that, he he, he that's when he was having major problems with his shoulder, and then um, I got two for, and I think my favorite would also be the second innings where we we yeah we we, we bowled them out. I think they needed about five hundred to win, uh, with with a day and a half. So yeah, that that five for in, in the second innings we were a bowler down. We even had Temba. Timber bowling at some stage <laughs> and that was something really remarkable uh, to be a part of and winning uh, my first time going to Australia winning was amazing and then a game which I really enjoyed watching um, it would have to be between the 4-3-8 game uh, but that is quite cliche although it was a remarkable game um, I would probably uh, say when uh, I can't remember when it was. It's 20, 20, might have been twenty sixteen or, or seventeen, where we became the number one test side in the world. I think it was at Lords. Uh, yeah, I was watching that game. Uh, England needed to block out, and I just remember Vern taking the last wicket of uh, Stephen Finn, 
uh, there was a very entertaining game to watch. I mean, that's that's one that's that comes to my head right now. Some wonderful, wonderful cricket memories, and there are many more memories to be created. Last one for you: when this is all done, away from the cricket, what's the one thing you can't wait to do? Just go out and have a drink and just socialize. I mean, face to face socializing would be great. Um, I'm tired of looking into a camera. <laughs> um, yeah, literally. I can't wait to socialize with, with, with my mates. I'm sure they can't wait as well. We can't wait. The only people who are probably hoping the lockdown extends are international batsmen because the longer it lasts, the longer they don't have to face Kagi about A good luck with the podcast. I'm really interested in having a listen to them. Keep strong and keep safe. And we'll see you back on a cricket field soon. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Cheers. For our final guest this week, we go not to Hawaii or California, but instead to Sydney, where we find a top musician, a great golfer, and a guy who occasionally does a little bit of surfing. Hello, Kelly Slater. I, I think you mixed the order of those things up a little bit, but hey, I won't fault you for it. Everyone's going crazy. Now, if I were to tell somebody I'm going to catch up with Kelly Slater, they'd be going, oh, brilliant. We're going to look forward to seeing uh, great scenes of Hawaii or probably have a look at that phenomenal surf ranch of his sitting out in the middle of the desert. But instead, we find you in Sydney. Why would that be, Kelly? Well, I've been in, I, I was in New Zealand. I went to New Zealand to uh, play a, a member guest tournament with a friend right before competing at a surf contest. And uh, while I was there, they put everything in lockdown and the world went crazy. And, um, you know, to the point where no one could uh, surf or play golf in New Zealand. But I escaped the, uh, the imprisonment over there. Actually, I, I left New Zealand on one of the last flights to get into Australia before foreigners weren't allowed. Went to a two-week quarantine at my place and then uh, got a bit of surfing time in uh, Queensland. And uh, then drove down to Sydney a few days ago just to see a friend who's uh, a bit ill. So you're getting to do all sorts of things that we cannot do in South Africa. So as to clarify, in Australia at the moment, you can go out, you can go and play golf, you can go and surf. Yes, they um, they locked it down a little bit. Um, they 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 stopped golf in Queensland, and there's a couple beaches in Sydney you can't go to, like Bondi and Maroubra. Etc. They've since opened a couple back up, but I think Bondi shut because too many hipsters are making out on the beach or something. You and I have had some some very deep and serious conversations over the years with the Alfred Dunhill Championship, mostly around the uh, the quality of surfing in uh, in landlocked cities around the world. But of of uh, of the more serious nature, uh, for you is is this uh, an important time to just sit back and uh, and have a bit of a think about what this pandemic might be saying to us about the, the way we live our lives? Yeah, I I think everyone will have a good perspective on it if they look at it in the right way my you know my first thoughts were the number one thing you can do is control you can only control yourself like we don't know a lot about this it, it's still a mystery somewhat we understand coronaviruses and what they do but we haven't had one like this this aggressive um you, obviously there have been communicable diseases that are more dangerous than this ebolas and and zikas and things like that west nile virus um, things with higher mortality rates. Uh, I think we're all getting a, a bit of an education on on some of those things um, recently. <clears throat> it somehow seems, you know, through social media, you got a lot of tense uh, conversations and debates. So everyone has become a um, a scholar, an educated scholar on all this stuff right away. But I think it's something we're all starting to learn. Um, we're, we 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 all want to know whether uh, you know what happens if you get it. How how do you Keep yourself protected. If you do get it, what are the safe things to do? Well, all we're really in control of now is keeping our distance from people and, and trying to keep ourselves, our own immune systems as healthy as possible and our families and the rest of it. You know, if you end up with this, hopefully you get through it, maybe asymptomatically. And um, we don't, I think no one is really clear on whether you can catch it again, how long the antibodies last, those sort of things. So. Um, uh, you know, there's a lot to be learned about this. And in the meantime, a lot of people are losing jobs, um, financial stress on families. I think there's going to be a focus on, 
on our own personal resources, um, funds, you know, putting money away for a rainy day. This will probably be a good wake up call for a lot of people. Um, and hopefully those are lessons we all uh, kind of become aware of. We don't need as much as a lot of us have. And there's some people that are under resourced and need help. So um, I think it's a good time for the world to, to take a breather and really think about all the stress we put on the system, the way we live, the environment, um, what's available to us, and, and think about what's important. I, I can't Hold on, bye. Just doing a little interview. Say hi to my friend Bailey while we're here. Say hi, Bay. Hi, Bailey. Welcome to the Dan Eagle Show. I know it's a dream come true. Hold on. I'm handling the situation. So I, I'm just doing a live thing. Any, any way chance Bay can, can run inside for a minute? It's all good. <laughs> hey, the real, the real life, Dan. You bring, you bring your, you bring your fans the real stuff. You know, I did. This is cutting edge television, Kelly Sagan. <laughs> Thank you for being part of it. <laughs> All right. So sage words there from one of the world's great athletes and uh, a great thinker of life, as the Instagram feed shows us. The the world you know, it changed radically, including sports, and sports across the world is off for now. We're hoping that the Olympics move to 2021, surfing now at the Olympics. Uh, where does yep. Kelly Slater stand for the Olympic Games for 2021 in Tokyo? Should they go ahead? Interesting question, really. I'm wondering that myself because I, I, I'm one spot off the U.S. team. Uh, you would expect after a year's delay that you would re you would have a requalification process. Strangely enough, when I didn't make the team in the end, at the end of the year, I I wasn't really stressed about it at all. So maybe either way, you know, if I do or don't do the Olympics, and um, I I think it would be a nice uh, bookend to my to my career and that sort of thing. But if I don't make the Olympics, that's that's all right. It's just the way life is. But, uh, I'm, you know, I may have another chance to qualify this year. We'll see what happens. If they do have a requalification, you will have another crack. And I hope that happens because it would be lovely to see you at the Olympics because you've probably only got another 15, 20 years at the very top of global surfing. Uh, I, uh, I had a chat after you finished uh, just off the qualification uh, with... Uh, Two people you know well, uh, Mr. Rob Lowe, a fellow surfer, and uh, Mr. Johan Rupert, the sports analyst. We had a look at your build-up, and we felt, Kelly, that what had really undermined your Olympic assault was the lack of a six-week training camp alternating between Jeffries Bay and St. Francis Lynx. So I think we'd be happy to host you to get you back on track and, uh, and make 2021 reality. I think you're. I think you're right. I, I. I did. I only did four weeks there last year. Five weeks, but. A full six-week camp would work. I think Rob's got a few secret spots for me. And I think Johan's ready to come out of surf retirement and um, get back on the board. I think we should start a hashtag, make Johan surf again, and um, see what happens. <laughs> I, look, uh, I look forward to hearing his response to that. Uh, just before we let you wrap up your evening in Sydney, Kelly, uh, I'll give you a, a poser. It is the time of Corona. It's the time of lockdown. You get to pick one person to surf with, one person to play golf with, and then one person to play some music with as you bring out that guitar of yours that you play so brilliantly. And then the four oh, of you man. together. Who, who would those three people be? It's a tough one. I, uh, You know what? I'm going to go Ernie Els. I like Ernie a lot. He's a great guy. Always been really nice and kind to me. And um, we haven't had a round together, but we've had a dinner together and a couple drinks here and there at St. Andrews. Uh, music? Music. I'd love to say Stevie Wonder, but he's so out of my league, I couldn't keep up. But uh, just to sit there and watch him, I'll put the guitar down and watch Stevie Wonder. Um, and uh, a surf. Who would I have a surf with? Somebody who paddles really slowly and doesn't catch many waves, so I get more waves. Um, All right. Maybe yourself, accepted, yourself, Kelly. Yourself, Thank uh, you. Maybe Brandon Kersner in Cape Town, and I'll take all the waves. <laughs> Followed by a fabulous dinner headline by the sparkling company that is Kelly Slater. Uh, Kelly, thank you. It's been really cool to catch up with you. And uh, I, uh, I hope that we do get to see you at the Dunhill a little later on this year and uh, hit a few golf balls yeah. and sing the guitar. And, uh, and then we all come out of this on the, on the right side, happy, healthy, and the same. Thanks, Dan. Always good to see you and talk to you. 
And, uh, you know, when I hear you say my name, I dread it because I've seen you just rip so many people apart with that wit of yours, but you've always been kind. So I appreciate that. Thank you. And uh, so hi to all my friends in South Africa. Uh, quick hi to Giselle and family in Durban, to Shane Thorne and, and those guys, to Brandon, uh, to Craig McKay and, and family, uh, Jay Bay. So hope you guys are all good and healthy. And Rob Lowe as well. Say hi to Rob for me. So Sydney wraps us up with Kelly Slater, who'll be out to South Africa just as soon as he can get here. Thanks to Kelly. Thanks to Kagiso Rabada. Make sure you check out his new podcast. And a big thank you to Sir John Kerwin for doing such wonderful work in the sphere of mental health. Look after your mental health. Look after each other. Stay safe. We'll see you back again next week. Goodbye. Life, like the conversation, keeps changing. Get the first ever needs-matched life insurance that changes as your life changes.